No need to fight over it, guys. There's enough to go around. You on the end. Oh, yes, you. You're missing out, aren't you? Why don't you jump in there and help yourself? I don't know which is which. You all look exactly the same, don't you? You should do. You gonna go and have some seeds? <coughs> G'day guys, welcome back. I'm gonna do a jiggle pour today. I'm gonna lay my paints in the cup and I'm gonna do a bit of a jiggle in the centre. I am using my favourite paints together, my favourite colour scheme, blue, turquoise, white, uh, like a yellowy orange, and red. So these are all Montmartre Studio acrylics. That's them there. I'm not going to get them all down off the shelf because they're too big and heavy, but that's the colours. That is Thalo Blue. The turquoise here I made myself, it's actually turquoise with a little bit of phthalo blue just to make it a little bit of a more of a blue turquoise rather than a green turquoise. The white, uh, this one is orange and yellow, a little bit of orange, mainly yellow, and that one is the brilliant red that I just showed you. And when I'm doing ring pours or jiggle pours, waterfall pours, anything like that where you want your rings or your fingerlings to remain sort of um, I guess dominant you need to thicken up your mix so this is 70% glue and 30% water so it's nice and thick I'll actually bring this up so you can have a look at the consistency so much thicker than I would use for a, a flip cut pour see the big mound Leaves a trace on the top for quite a while. It's still there. It's still there. Like when I do my flip cups, I go like this and I go one, two, three, and it should be gone. But as you can see, it's still sitting there on the top. So really, really thick. That's what you want to have it for uh, this type of pour. Um, otherwise, the colours just blend too much and you don't see your rings or your fingerlings or whatever it is that you want to create. Um, now, what have I got here? I've got 60 grams of pouring medium and 60 grams of paint. That's 120. One, two, three, four, five. So that's 600 grams of paint. Yeah, that should be a good size to use. I'm just going to start layering. So no silicone in these at all. Uh, I should be able to get hopefully three layers. So I've got my cool colours and then I've got my white and it's separating the cools from the warms because obviously the blues and the yellow make green. Um, the blue and the, the red kind of make a bit of a purple but it's okay. I don't want the white next to the red so we go again with the blue and we'll just keep layering until I've got I've used up all the paint, so whether that's three layers or maybe four layers, we shall see. And the other thing with making your paint nice and thick is you tend not to get, uh, you know, the thicker it is, the less sort of cells or strange reactions you might get in your paint. Okay, it looks as if I'm going for four layers here. How pretty is that, hey? nice and thick this paint just hope i haven't made it too thick oh maybe i'll even go another layer because there's still quite a bit of paint in there okay so now i'll just scrape out whatever's left and as you can see it's pretty thick it just sits on top if your paint is falling straight through, then it's too thin. You really need to thicken it up if you want a good result for this technique. Hopefully it'll be a good result anyway. I 
did a ring pour recently with these colours, but I mixed up my 70-30 mix. I did one-to-one -one of paint, and then I kind of chickened out. I thought, oh, this looks way too thick, and added a little bit of um, water to them, and I shouldn't have. So it kind of thinned them out a little bit. Got a little bit of white left over from the other day. I just added it to my other white. It's a bit thinner, this white. It doesn't really leave a mound. I'm going to use that for my corners if I need any paint on my corners or just to help the paint flow. Then I'll use that. It's been sitting with a, an upside down cup on it to keep it keep it um, wet, not to let it have a dry skin over the top. I just get a big plastic cup and I turn it upside down. Actually I might, a oh, little bit. I forgot that this orangey colour is quite dominant. Oops, it really took over on my ring pour. So, righty oh, let's do this so straight pour into the middle but I am going to jiggle the cup a little bit okay jiggle jiggle it's kind of making a fold over on top of itself I need to get a little bit closer if I can so I don't get that wriggle, I get more of a fold. Whoops, it's going a bit greyish or a bit brownish there. What can you do? You're going to use orange and turquoise, you're going to get brown. So here we go, keep going, keep going. See how it's folding over onto itself? Really, really pretty. Try and stay in the one spot. And just keep jiggling as your cup empties or your jug empties. Slow it down and get nice and close so that you don't get the jiggle, you sort of don't get the wriggles. Keep getting the folds. But you don't want it to go all wriggly. You want to keep those little folds happening and then when you can, put your finger onto the lip of your cup without sticking it into the paint and catch your drip. I've seen people get too close and stick their fingers in. Oh look that red's taken over. I forgot, I forgot that the red's so dominant. Never mind. <clears throat> now I'm just going to pour a little bit of that white around there and I'm just going to Cover the corners just to help it flow over the corners. Got plenty of paint there, so I should be able to make it. Oops, I better be careful I don't get my little tool in there. So this is nice and thin. If it's too thick, then the paint it gets to this white and it has to kind of go over a little ridge. So you don't want that to happen. You want it to be thinner than your colours so that the colours just glide over it easily. Does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> all right. And if I don't manage to go over all the corners and edges, that's okay. I'll just paint them white. Now I do need to pop some bubbles though. Looks like we may get a few cells popping up here and there. I'd rather pop them now than later. <laughs> Definitely got too much red in there. Next time, half the amount of red as the other colours. It just it's overtakes everything. Right, let's go... And do a big circle first. And 
and come back. Oh, there we go. That's one circle. Can I leave it now? <laughs> oh. So you always get one half that's brighter and the one half that's always a little bit more blended. So you can decide whether or not you want to keep both or one or... Um, now, it's tricky. I'm just going to go off to this corner a little bit and come back. I'll kind of make a square. And come back. Come back to the middle again. Go off to the other corner. See how the paint is sliding over the top now of that white? So hopefully you keep your rings a little bit easier if it just slides over the top. Up to the middle, off to this corner. Okay. Now is the moment of truth. You have to decide what you want to keep, what you want to let go. This is quite muddy here. So let's go off this corner closest to me, but on a bit of an angle to get rid of some of that muddy bit. Muddy bit, muddy bit. Up to the middle. I'm going to go over that corner. Now, this is quite muddy here, as you can see, but the rest of it is really gorgeous. So I'm going to leave it for now. I'll do the other corners and then we can decide what we want to do with that, that muddy bit. Because you always get that. There's always one, one half of, of a ring pour or a jiggle pour like this that's always really beautiful. And then the other half... Mm, not so much. It's just the way the paint is uh, lying in the jug, I guess, the way it comes out. I'll turn that so you can see what I'm doing. Come back. When I did my first Phoenix Rising Pour, which was like this, haven't seen it check it out it's pretty old though um, I actually took off all of that muddy bit because I didn't like it so I don't know whether or not I will do that this time It's, it's a tough call because this is all so beautiful around here with the fingerlings. It's really pretty. So it's, it's a hard call to make to get rid of a lot of that paint. I'm just going to walk this and see if I can get rid of some of that mud on the, the bottom there. Maybe if I open it up a little bit more, it might work a bit better. How's that? Bit of a vortex happening, isn't it? So, you know, as I said, you could take all this off, but I'll take you down for a close-up later in a minute and you can see how beautiful it is. It's, it would be a real shame to, uh, to get rid of it. Now, my OCD is telling me that this, <laughs> this red comes off here and it doesn't come off there. But, you know, that's okay. I shouldn't worry about that. I might take a little bit more off that corner there, though. I can get all the way over there. And just try and open up these lines a little bit more. Okay, so that's gone.
you can see how that's opened up that in there so I should probably do mm, no if I tip some of that off then the muddiness is just going to be more pronounced mm, I don't know it's tricky I think I'll just leave it <laughs> You keep fussing with these things and they get worse. Um, I do need to just bring this back to the centre a little bit more though. Like that. I guess it doesn't matter if it's got the bit of muddiness. You know, it is what it is. It's fluid art. <clears throat> it's kind of a bit purple. See my hands are purple? It's where the, um, the red and the blue have mixed. I've got that, that purple shade there but that is just what happens when you mix fluids together you know obviously they're going to mix and blend I need some blue for this corner so what do you reckon do you like it I do think though if I start taking any more off um, it just, it'll just look worse. Not that it looks bad. It's really pretty. I'm happy with it. Don't get me wrong. But I always get this muddy bit here and I haven't worked out how not to get it. Um, as I said, with my first Phoenix Rising, I just took all that off um, and opened. And this just all opened up. But these... Are gorgeous these fingerlings so I'm going to just leave it alone all right that's all my edges done let me get you down for a close-up And what does it look like from up here? Yeah, just... Hmm. I'm just not happy with it. I think I'm going to have to tilt it a bit more. Standing up here on my ladder and looking down, I'm just not that happy with it. I'm going to have to do something else with it. Let me get some more gloves. And, um, yeah, I'm going to... I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I'll try and get some of this off. Don't know how. Just walking it like I do when I do my flip cut pulls. You know how I walk the paint? Just to try and keep composition try and walk it is that any better is that worse it's not as grey looking. I still want to keep some of this. See, I don't want it all to go, so. So I think I'm gonna to have to just leave it like that. It's really hard to know when to stop fiddling. But if you're going to fiddle, I guess do a little bit. Step back and look at it. Move it a tiny bit more. Step back and look at it. I think it's better. I'm just going to move that over a bit more. 
Okay. I think I'm happy with that. I've got a little bit of the greyish there, but I can live with that. I can. Righto, let's get you down for a close-up. And I didn't ruin it. It's always a risk when you go and try and change things is you might ruin it. So we've got that beautiful blue centre and all that orange and yellow and red around the outside. All right, I do want to show you. Oops. I'm going to show you these fingerlings. Oops, I'm in the way. I've got a window behind me, so I'm in the making a shadow. So a little bit of muddiness there, as you can see. It's not too bad, but look at those fingerlings there. See, that's why I didn't want to take all of that off, because you'd lose that. And you probably couldn't see it from up there. Look at that. And then down here, these fingerlings are amazing. Look at the multicolours in them. So you wouldn't, you would not get that at all if your mix was too thin because it would just all blend and you wouldn't get that definition. Look at that, that is just, that's the shot of the day, isn't it? Look at that. I wish I could take a photo now. <laughs> I'll have to come back to it. That is what's going on my YouTube video. Little, what do they call those little things? The little photo that you put up with the... with the video. Don't know. Okay, so here's a lot of red up here and then we've got more of the blue here. Look at those colors all blending beautifully. Again, if your mix was too thin, that would just all be blurred together. And see where the red goes into the yellow there and it's got the little strips of blue and turquoise through it so pretty there you go oh and of course the blue section where you've got those little flames licking the ocean there <laughs> it's a better color it was a bit bright with the window there Changes the colours a little bit, but uh, yeah, look at that. And then over here, they love peacock feathers, aren't they? Really little thin little strips of colour going into the blue there. So, happy with that one. Probably just too much red. <laughs> Um, yeah, so the colours that go in first into your jug are the colours that come out last and they will be your centre like that. See, I put the navy in first, well not the navy, the blue in first, so that's why I've got the blue in the centre and then I put the turquoise and then I went the white um, and then the yellow and then of course the red on the outside. So depending on how you layer your cup, uh, will determine how the paints come out. So if you want a blue centre, put blue in first. Or if you want a yellow centre, put yellow in first. But I like that. I like the way that the looks like the flames are, are lapping at the water, at the water's edge. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Love it. Okay. That's my little phoenix rising too because it's been so long since i've done it all right thanks for watching you guys love you all i'll see you real soon bye for now